Well, my Dorks, Nerds, Geeks, and Gamers, it's your host, Ghost, here, and you're watching a brand new episode of Dorks in Movie Minute. Today, we're going to continue on with our discussion on the Book of Boba Fett. Uh, today, we are on chapters three and four. Um, so, yeah, let's hop right in and start talking about what we're going to talk about. i got to say, right off the bat, uh, these two episodes, compared to episodes one and two, I th thought were much weaker episodes. Um, I think they focused too much, too heavily, on the flashback uh, sequences. And when they did show uh, modern action sequences, such as in episode three, uh, they were very terrible, uh, terribly made, but badly done, such as the car chase. Um, it was over the top, it didn't feel right for Star Wars, and it didn't really fit the lore. It felt like they were kind of forcing characters to do certain things in certain situations that didn't, didn't really pay off in the way they thought it would. Uh, but that's just my opinions on these next two episodes. So, we're going to hop right in. Uh, we learned that after Jabba, Bib Fortuna was the uh, leader of the territory, and he's, what he did was he split it up into three other leaders. Uh, because he split the land up into, into factions, basically into different areas that uh, different leaders have, so that way he didn't have to worry about keeping everyone in control, he just had to worry about keeping the top people in control, and then they would keep the rest of the citizens in line and whatever. Uh, and that's what led to the, the confusion between the two huts, the twins, that were looking to claim that land, on top of them sending the Black Hazar to attack uh, Boba Fett. That was all because of Bib Fortuna setting up this... this um, cabal of uh, leaders, of town leaders that keep this place, the criminal underbelly under control of uh, in Tatooine. Uh, so that's basically what they were getting through at the, at the very beginning of this episode. Um, basically, he runs into this older guy. He tells him that he needs his help clearing the streets of his enemies. Uh, Boba's like, sure, I'll help you out. He goes to meet these enemies, comes to find out they are these like cyborg people. Uh, they got like cybernetic parts on them, very much Cyberpunk 20, 2077 style. Uh, but much in the way of Star Wars. I don't think it worked at all. Um, I, mean, I get that Star Wars is huge and it's a big galaxy and there's all sorts of different life forms out there. Uh, but this did not fit with the Star Wars branding and it felt very out of place for me. It felt, it felt very much TV friendly, uh, TV movie kind of vibe. It didn't feel very Star Wars at all. Uh, not at all. Like, very disappointing by that. Uh, but yeah, it's about him basically teaming up with these cyberpunk kids and they're trying to track down the, uh, if you remember last episode they got jumped by the group of the mayor's men. They're trying to track down the mayor and they, they find the assistant to the mayor. They have this huge car chase. Um, the cybernetic people decide to help Boba Fett because he decided to take their side after the guy told, uh, Boba Fett to take, to basically kill the, the cybernetic, uh, gang. Uh, so they take his side. There's this huge car chase. They end up stopping the, um... The mayor's man at the very end, um, and that's when Boba kind of realizes, okay, I have a lot more people after me than I than I thought was going to happen. The same time in this episode as well that we get a flashback about Boba, um, basically more about um, him joining the Sand People, the Tuscan Raiders, more about him helping them out in situations and learning more about their people, um, and it basically sets up um, where he was in the Mandalorian season two. This episode three basically kind of does the setup for that, and then episode four basically tells you what happened um, in between the Mandalorian season two and before that to, to, to lead into the Mandalorian season two, and then after that with uh, episode uh, four of this. So that's episode three. I give it a solid five out of ten. Uh, it is probably my least favorite episode I've seen so far of the series. Um, over the top, cheesy action. It didn't feel like Star Wars at all, in my opinion. Uh, but the Black Hazar segments where him and, and Boba Fett fight, where that was very cool. Um, and some other segments, uh, but seeing the side characters in the world around them, that was also cool as well. And some of these droids that we haven't seen since the original trilogy, since 1, 2, and 3, you see them running around the, in Tatooine, and it makes it feel very connected to the other parts of the trilogy in the Star Wars world. Uh, but that was Chapter 3, 5 out of 10. Uh, very, probably my least favorite episode so far. Moving on to Chapter 4. A uh, little bit better than Chapter 3, but still pretty weak compared to Episodes 1 and 2 of the series. Uh, we get a flashback of Boba scouting out Jabba's palace before he's going to make his attack uh, on the palace. Um, so this is before um, Mandalorian Season 2, before he goes on that journey and everything else. Um, he sees a flashing in the distance, and this is actually how he meets his uh, female partner that we see from Episodes 1 and 2. She's hurt. Uh, he basically picks her up, and he throws him on his tauntaun. And he runs to the cybernetic people, the cybernetic parts people, and he basically tells tells them, hey, you need to keep her alive at whatever cost it is. I will pay for it. I will take care of it or whatever. So they put all these cybernetic parts in her, and they keep her alive, um, and they basically give them back to Boba. At that point, she decides she's going to be loyal to Boba uh, for saving her life, and she says, you know, basically we're going to be a team from now here, from here on out. 
Um, and that leads to the events of Mandalorian Season 2, uh, where we get to see it connect to that a little bit. Um, then we get, um, back in modern times, we get them uh, sneaking into this casino area to talk with Black Kazar for whatever reason. Uh, they have to sneak in, and they're sneaking in, and there's this big battle in the kitchen area with these kitchen droids. Um, it was completely ridiculous once again, just like Chapter 3. That's why I'm going to give it a little bit lower score than, um, than I did Episodes 1 and 2. Over the top, ridiculous, kid friendly, it doesn't really work and it, it, it really takes away from Boba Fett as a character uh, because he's such a, a BA character, he can do whatever he wants, he can kill whoever he wants, he's the biggest, baddest bounty hunter in Star Wars. Uh, so to see them kind of strip that away from him and make, this, make him this goofy, feeble old man, um, it doesn't really work in my opinion. Uh, but I'm going to keep watching because I, I hope it gets better and I hope they finally get to tie a little bit more of this Mandalorian storyline into it. Uh, maybe we'll get to see Mando, maybe Grogu, Luke Skywalker, uh, all these characters, Ahsoka. To see all of them incorporate into his storyline would be cool as well because he incorporated so much into the Mandalorian Season 2 storyline. Uh, so I'm waiting to see how they take that. Uh, but basically him and Black Kazar end up running into each other in this bar. Uh, he basically tells him to join his team. Uh, he basically agrees. Uh, then Boba holds a meeting of all the criminal underbelly, you know, the criminals in the town or whatever. And this is basically the start of the, the, the true Boba Fett stronghold um, in Tatooine. So I cannot wait to see where Boba takes his crew of misfits and of uh, bad guys and gang members and everything else and see where he takes them uh, in the next episodes, uh, 5 and 6. Uh, but for episode 4, I give it a 7 out of 10, slightly better than episode 3. Not as cheesy, but there were those cheesy moments in there uh, that does ruin Boba Fett's character in some ways, in my opinion. Uh, but let me know down below what you guys thought of the book of Boba Fett, chapters 3 and 4. Are you guys enjoying the show uh, as well as I am or not? If you are enjoying it, let me know why. And if you aren't enjoying it, also let me know why down below in the comments section. Um, like, subscribe, and share. And as always, guys, keep it right here on Dorkston. I've been your host, Ghost. Adios.